In this video, I show you the techniques I used to shoot a hip hop video with fairly minimal gear and how I managed to get this. This was for a pretty new hip hop slash dark pop group called Yikes. And of course I'll link to all of their music and the final video below. As this was a performance video with no narrative, so to speak, the emphasis was really on creating interest from the performance itself changing the look and pulling off some cool camera techniques. A full breakdown of the preparation involved, the gear I used, and then the techniques they used during filming and then editing, all to come. I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip around to the bits you want, no problem at all. I'm also on the long winding path to 100,000 subscribers and it would really make my day if you could reach down and hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. It really just helps the channel, helps me out and I really appreciate it in advance. I thank you. This is not sponsored content but it is made possible by my Patreon backers. Any funds I get from Patreon I put back into the channel to buy gear and then I give the gear away to my backers. If that's of interest, do check it out, everything is linked below. Onward. Starting with the all important prep and I don't know about you but I like to do a really thorough prep list before I go out and shoot. I just use the notes app on my phone and I just put everything that I could potentially need on that list. Um, you know, even things as obvious as things like batteries, charge them up, you know, uh, remember SD cards, make sure they're, you know, wiped so you're not wasting time later on. Anything that can save you a little, uh, that little bit of anxiety, you know, when you get in the car to go, um, it all helps. So I just bung everything into my prep list. On this occasion, I wasn't able to visit the location before the day, so I got there a little early. This is just good advice for anything really. It just looks professional and, you know, it just gives you time to sort of scout out the area and, you know, minimizes the risk of any issues. In this case, it was filmed at Brunel Studios, which is a recording studio in the West Country of the UK. I've filmed at recording studios a lot in the past, so this was a really kind of comfortable environment to shoot in. The other reason why I thought it was good to arrive early was to set up my Tiki tube lights. If you've seen my review of these, you'll know they are so cool, but with a rather finicky user interface. That review is worth a watch, but these are cool. I will show you exactly what I did with those in just a bit, of course, but now moving on to the gear section and I filmed the whole thing with just one camera. That's the Sony a7S III in S-Log3, which I'm filming on right now, and just one lens. And that is my music video secret weapon, which is the Sony 20 millimeter f 1.8. I've now filmed so many music videos with just this lens now, it's ridiculous. And that's because, uh, for a few reasons, really. Firstly, it loves being on a gimbal. Secondly, the autofocus is very good when paired with a Sony camera, obviously. And it's just about wide enough that you can get a good sense of space, a good sense of movement on a gimbal, and with a large enough maximum aperture that you can separate the subject nicely. It's just magic. And speaking of gimbals, this video was shot entirely on a gimbal and I use the Zheun Webill 2, I believe. It's a product that I've never reviewed because I, I don't know, I just feel like there's, there's enough out there already. But if you're, if you if you need a gimbal and you don't have quite enough cash for a DJI, um, I highly recommend looking at Zheun. They are such great value for money and um, it's uh, it's just an essential bit of kit. It's amazing. Attached to my Sony 20mm lens, I had the Revo Ring 1/8 strength mist filter and no ND filter. I did this because I knew I'd have lots of visible lights in the frame and I really wanted to accentuate them. And this turned out to be a really good move, I think, because as you can see, the tube lights in the background are really blooming and it just looks so cool. And so let's talk about lighting next, shall we? So when I showed this video to a few people once it was finished, they all said a similar thing, which was, oh my god, the, the lighting setup looks really complicated. And you know what? It's really not. I used just one key light hoisted up high and pointed at a slight angle, but basically just straight down. That light was the Aperture 600D with a light dome and with the grid attached. That way I got that kind of diffused light that, you know, you can contain, as I didn't want lots of light spilling into the background. Those five 
LED tube lights that you can see in the background are the Tiki Pro RGB lights, which I mentioned earlier. And seeing as I was at a recording studio, I was able to grab a load of mic stands with boom arms and grab my gaffer tape and gaffered the tube lights to the stands. And this worked perfectly, so that was the setup. Simple. And then moving on to the techniques I used whilst filming and sticking with the lighting, so I made sure to continuously change the color of the lights in the background, the tube lights. Uh, I wanted a shot with lots of different colors. And in fact, what I did was um, after I got the first couple, I handed my phone, which had the Tiki app on it. And I actually let the singer choose the color, which I think was a really nice touch. Um, she, I think, uh, enjoyed playing a part in you know what the final video would look like. So. Yeah, I um, that was fun. But of course, I couldn't rely on just different color lights in the background. So to mix things up, I got a nice low angle, which I'm told is incredibly hip hop. I really like it. It's a really nice change of perspective from the other angles. The track also has a cool kind of breakdown section about two thirds of the way through where the bass and the drums drop out of the track. And to kind of match that with the video, the bass player and drummer left the set and going into the break section, we'd switched the tube lights off. And then coming out of the break, we switched them back on and this worked so well, I love this. Other than that, I got a load of other sort of interesting shots that I could mix in when I needed them. This sweet time lapse shot where the singer sings tick tock, tick tock, and repeat near the end of the song. I had the singer say tick and then wobble her head whilst I walked a semicircle around her and then I had her say tock and then we repeated. In editing, I just did some speed ramping with the head wobbling sections to sync up the ticks and tocks and I love the result. It seemed really fitting to mess with the time on a section where she's talking about the time and I think this really worked well. I got a shot through the legs and plenty of slow-mo and b-roll of the rest of the band because honestly it's one of those kind of filming pearls of wisdom you can't have too much b-roll as for the editing techniques let me start by just showing you my color grading chain this is a pretty simple chain i started with color wheels to make exposure and minor color adjustments then a conversion lookup table in which i like the phantom lut neutral lut these emulate the way that array cameras deal with color and they're just the best if you wanted to snap these up i will link them below and you can use the code HAV at the checkout for a discount. They are the best. After that, I'm using a style lookup table on less than 50%. This is the Triune Films Harry Potter Rec 709 lookup table. Next, I use another instance of color wheels for contrast adjustments. It's important to do this after your lookup tables so that you can set the true output contrast. Finally, I have an instance of hue saturation curves, and this is for desaturating the very darkest shadows and brightest highlights to make sure that they're truly black and white respectively. Note in this case, I actually preferred not to touch the shadows because they affected the color from the tube lights in the background. As for the other techniques used, I used lots of speed ramp, movement, and glitch-based transitions wherever I felt the song called for it. All of these are courtesy of Motion VFX, which they do so well, and I'll link the ones I used below for you. And that's kind of it. And you know what? Let me just grind everything we've learned in this video up and uh, we'll make a nice espresso of tips to take away. Prep is really a key for success with these kind of videos. It really helped me in this case, and it's just kind of good advice. When there's no narrative, create interest in other ways, such as shooting lots of alternate angles. Definitely don't skimp on B-roll, that's a pearl of wisdom. Getting a certain amount of slow motion footage also can be really helpful to have. And finally, in editing, really lean into those visually exciting elements that you have, such as interesting transitions, messing with the timing of things, and movement. Anyway, that's all for now. I just hope you found this video interesting and helpful. Do, of course, go and look at the final video. Go and give it a watch and give it a thumbs up. And, uh, and let me know what would you have done differently. I'm interested. I'm down in the comments as much as I can be. I'll see you down there. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio, of which the algorithm has chosen this video for you to watch next. And the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. Bye.